Uh, up next, Andy Slavinsky from Mavur will uh, give a presentation on his journey to cloud native. Welcome, Andy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Andy is our last run up to lunch, so keep him pumped. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I do realize I'm the only thing standing between you guys and lunch, so I, I appreciate it. Uh, I will make it exciting and say I'm going to offer up not one, but two live demos during my presentation. So what that means is not only you'll see uh, some slides, but you'll see some moving bits on the screen. Um, and if it doesn't work, then that means we all go to lunch 15 minutes early. So um, let's get started. Um, a little bit about us and uh, kind of why I chose this topic, you know, when I was asked to present. Um, We've really been a Couchbase customer for three months. Uh, I'll be honest. That's all it took us to go from idea um, to POC to, uh, to live system. And I'll show you guys in the demos kind of two of our um, achievements um, that I am very proud of uh, being a technologist myself. And, and um, um, a bit about us, kind of uh, Mover is a SaaS platform that enables this cool thing called digital transformation, which really translates to a very basic thing, um, stay relevant, right? Otherwise, um, you probably won't exist. Um, and, and, and the key there is that we've been doing this since 2010. We've actually started as a consulting firm, right? I can, I can say we've had the first intelligent edge, but those were our consultants uh, running around with laptops, collecting data, pulling things from our customers to really help um, with, uh, with projects like software asset management and uh, uh, license consulting. Um, and what we've done since then is kind of realize that you can't scale a consulting business except at the power of one, um, but you can scale a software business much better. Things like uh, um, cloud containers, uh, NoSQL databases, they scale much better. Um, so we've kind of moved in in 2012 uh, to the cloud. We've tried both AWS and Azure. Um, the idea is that we've learned a lot by, by going there ourselves. And um, one of the things we've learned is that it's really easy to screw it up. And we've built that environment ourselves about three times. We've had the luxury to do it, but it was a very eye-opening and expensive exercise, right? To, to tear an environment down of you know, hundreds of servers and databases and PaaS and IaaS and everything that makes up your environment and build it all over again um, is something that I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed to, to admit it. I'm happy of that failure because we've learned a lot. And what, everything we've learned, we've kind of put back into the product. That's a screenshot of Mover. We're an enterprise-focused company. That means we help enterprises, your traditional enterprise, go into this journey with us. Um, we have customers in about 60 countries. And we grow every day. And, and, and what we've done with this data is kind of um, uh, branched out in four areas, right? One of them is discovery. Another one is the cloud readiness. Data center optimization, so your traditional data center workloads, do they need to go in the cloud? Not all of them. Uh, and then cybersecurity. Um, so if you look at discovery, which is kind of something that we've mastered, you know, 10 years ago when we started doing this, we collect data from all these desperate systems, right? Active directory, servers, workstations, databases, networks, uh, virtualization technologies, your firewalls, performance data. Everything comes back now to this Mover cloud, okay? And if this slide looks familiar, it should, because the reality is we treat IT like a big IoT, right? Only those devices, those end devices, are actually your servers, your, your databases, your workstations, and our bots that collect all this data, what they actually do is they act as the sensors that say, how, how hard is your device working? How much software does it have installed? How many users connect to this particular app? How many queries you run on that database? And all that information that, that, that becomes this, this a amazing array of interconnectivity between your apps, your users, and your devices give us this picture that we then build for the, for the customer and start making recommendations on and start you know, playing different scenarios. Hey, if you move to Azure, you can save X. If you move to AWS, you'll save Y. If you 
want to know what application to start modernizing, right? You guys heard it all day. You know, 90% of digital transformation initiatives fail, right? We failed three times. And that is because if you don't have good data to start with, if you don't do a good job with your discovery to know where your assets are, where your dependencies are, where your users live, how far are they from the actual app and the data, then the likelihood of succeeding in that project is quite low. Um, we all hear the great stories, but it's because people don't really talk about their failures. They like to kind of brush them under the, the carpet. Um, so anyway, this is the idea, you know, IoT of IT. Um, and then the way we've kind of done this is after we've nailed down the inventory, we've invented this thing called ARC, um, stands for actual resource consumption, which means we actually get performance data from all the systems, right? We do CPU and RAM utilization down to the thread level. So every process that spans multiple uh, instances, we actually get the performance down at that level. We do IOPS, we do throughput. We collect all this massive amount of data from every device at a very high frequency of interval, right? Um, because you can't map an enterprise just by scanning it once or scanning it once an hour. We actually do it at a very high uh, frequency. Uh, we pull Netstat data, event logs, SQL metrics, and this constitutes a bucket load of data. Uh, pun totally intended. The idea is that we have a lot of data and we have to take it and put it somewhere so we can analyze it, so we can make recommendations, so we can actually um, um, go to our customer and say, hey, check out what we found. You know, here's an app you can modernize today with a very low cost of entry, and hi here's how you should start. Um, so kind of first architecture when we built Arc uh, about 18 months ago um, was to go in to our preferred cloud vendor and say, let's use PaaS. We gotta build quickly, um, so you don't wanna invest a lot, you wanna create this POC, um, and see how it's gonna work. So we invested heavily in PaaS. Um, we, our only code here is the yellow box, our file transfer API, which receives all these hundreds and hundreds of little ARC payloads every second. And then, obviously, we dump that data into cheap storage, Azure Blob, um, AWS S3, whatever. The idea is that once you have the data there, you have to load it in some sort of a data store. And we chose, again, Azure Data Warehouse, uh, as, as a data store. And in the middle there, the loader is this thing called ADF, Azure Data Factory, um, comes very well geared towards moving data from blob to SQL, from SQL to SQL, from whatever, um, with a big promise that if you do it right, um, we give you a great performance um, benefit by using this new technology called Polybase. If you guys haven't heard about it, Polybase, it's an MPP system that loads a lot of data into a data warehouse quickly. Uh, we were in Azure, so why not, right? The reality is that it scales really well up until you get to about 100,000 servers that you're concurrently scanning. And your load time becomes about 30 minutes. Because what's not advertised in ADF is that Polybase works really good like 1.2 terabytes of data per second is what they promise on paper. But it never says there that all that data needs to be in one file or five. So when you have 100,000 files times 12, because we scan it, let's say, on average every five minutes, then you get a lot of tiny, tiny files that make up the same data, and that's when that load time becomes 30 minutes. So obviously I have an hour to load all this data be before a new cycle begins, what am I gonna do if I get to 200,000 servers, or 250, or a million, which is obviously where we're headed? You are in deep trouble, right? Because your load time it, it exceeds your actual time slice, so we're like, oh my God, we gotta go and re-architect this and, and rebuild it on something else. So again, we're in the cloud, let's go in and look at some caching, your typical you know, first use of cache. Um, this is reverse caching, right? It's not read, it's write. You know, you're looking at another pass. We chose Redis. Uh, this is before um, um, uh, Couchbase. So obviously, the promise there is that you cache your data, and then we build this tiny service called an R capacitor, which every 10 minutes kind of offloads that data from cache 
into blob, and instead of having 100,000 tiny files, I have six tiny files. 10 minutes in an hour, six files. And we did see something amazing. We saw almost 8x performance increase. So I can load the same data in four minutes. I've given myself a big cushion to kind of say, I can grow now. I can elastically support even more servers, right? But the reality is the performance when we started really testing Redis is not consistent. You can get really good reads, but being a PaaS, I have no control over that SLA. The SLA, again, on paper is 99.9 availability, but the throughput is not consistent. We were getting the same amount of data loaded in 30 seconds, and then three cycles later loaded in a minute and a half. Right? When you have about 3x variance, right, it's really hard to go and promise an SLA myself to a customer. So what we did is we reached Nirvana, we found Couchbase, and again, you guys heard it first, one of the first use cases is use it as a caching layer. Um, same file transfer API, minimum code change, right? Swap one library with another. So we put in um, uh, both our, our capacitor and the file transfer API to talk directly to, uh, to, to Couchbase, dump the data into Blob, and here's the time. And out of that time, 60 seconds of it is actually taken by my write to blob. So I've actually brought down the entire write time to about 30 seconds, um, which is huge. I think where we started, 30 minutes down to 30 seconds with very, very little work, right? So to keep my promise, I'm gonna go in and um, do a quick demo to actually show you guys in real time how this works. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's just VPN in quickly. Victory, okay. Couchbase console, um, if you guys haven't seen it, it's awesome. One last thing I have to install, it's right in the browser. Um, I can go and run my nickel queries here, I can go and see the status of my nodes. It's a simple test cluster. We're actually uh, testing 5.5 beta, which is awesome. Um, but the idea is that I have a bucket here called Arc. And I'm filling this bucket constantly with about you know, 30, 50 Arc payloads per second coming from our test environment. There's a TTL on this of two hours, so I'm actually flushing this Arc bucket every two hours. I don't want this to grow forever. Remember, it's a caching layer. Um, why two hours when I'm loading every 10 minutes? Well, what if I need to do some maintenance on the data warehouse or on the um, our capacitors? I give myself two hours to do that maintenance. Um, the idea is that here's the same query that I ran in Redis in a simple key value pair uh, that was taking about five minutes, or the, the mean was about, you know, between 30 seconds and a minute and a half plus writing to blob. Um, same data going in right now, um, and let's see where we are. It's 11 UTC, so I'm going to say, let's see the last 10 minutes worth of data, okay? That's counting about 3,700 payloads in 18 milliseconds, okay? And if you guys wonder, so again, let's, let's try to extrapolate because I don't have 100,000 servers in our lab, no matter how much I'm asking my CEO for more money. Um, all I can come up with is a, is a subset of that. But if I go in and try to simulate, you know, um, 100,000 servers, that's about 20,000. Again, you see the, 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 the relationship between my response time and the amount of data I can pull back is very linear and very predictable. And I've run this query, you know, with my guys hundreds of times to actually prove that I can scale this in a very simple and linear fashion. And if you guys wonder how the hell am I getting all this data so quickly, the answer is very simple, indexes, right? And Couchbase is awesome at indexing. 
Um, secondary indexes is the preferred method. We've got a couple that are replicated, which means if I go back to the query here and I look at the execution plan, all the data that I'm asking for here is actually in index uh, IX compound 5, and it's returned in a fraction of the time of what Redis could ever give me, right? Because Redis does not allow me to index data. All I can do is some pattern matching there. Um, so really, really simple, um, and I mean, this is all inside query. If I actually look in to show you guys, I do have uh, a live feed into, into a logging system, which is Logly, which I'm hoping is gonna work. Uh, take a look at the consistency of data. So this is me over the last 30 minutes, elapsed time to pull data from 17,000 arc payloads, right? So if you do the math, 100,000 would mean about five of this, and then, um, or six. So in one hour, I can do six of this, and the idea is that they're consistently taking about six seconds, right? So six seconds times six, about 36 seconds for me to load 100,000 servers worth of data from caching layer all the way into blob, which then gets loaded into the data warehouse. So example one, let's go back to the slides. For, for some more cool stuff. Um, second use case, um, we talked about cloud native principles, right? So caching, first one, provides reliability and elasticity, scalability. Uh, another very important cloud native principle is the fact that you keep your data and your services close to users. You wanna keep that latency low. Right? Our users are in 60 countries. We've kind of done the math. About 90% of them are either in North America or Europe. Okay? So guess what we did? We built two authentications. We built two Movers, basically, in two different environments. And yes, it was painful when I had to build them three times. Uh, but the idea is that you have a traffic manager, so a simple load balancer um, that directs traffic depending where the user comes from. And if I'm in the U.S., I'll get authenticated by some servers in the US. If I'm in Europe, I'll get authenticated against some servers in Europe. And the idea is that our simple authentication layer has to store that data somehow. You gotta store those identities. You gotta store those usernames and password hashes and all that good stuff uh, somewhere. And again, we had to build this fairly quickly. We went to PaaS. SQL Azure seemed like a great solution for this. Because SQL Azure, again, we're all familiar with SQL. Um, that's, uh, that's, what, that's what we've been using for a long time. It does work until you have to replicate data at scale, right? When you have 10 users you need to replicate, it's pretty fast. When you have thousands of users that constantly log in, change their passwords, change their contact details, uh, get access to more tenants, to more customers, then that data grows significantly. And that sync time, believe it or not, grows significantly. So, um, they use this thing called SQL Data Sync. It's a free feature once you're in Azure. Uh, it's bi-directional, great. That means you can deal with some conflict resolution. It works on this hub-spoke principle, which means you can have one central uh, uh, data store that dictates the replication with others. Um, you can set it to be constant, but it doesn't work. So you have to settle for scheduled uh, syncs. Um, you can do table and column filters, so again, Kind of tempting. Uh, I don't want for you know GDPR purposes all my users in Europe maybe to be synced up with uh, with the US, um, and then it is a model of eventual consistency. Uh, the biggest draw to it again, PaaS easy to set up. So you know a few clicks, a few drag and drops, you can do it. The problem with it is again you get to a point where you need to scale and you realize that if, if continuous sync doesn't work and five minutes also doesn't work, we've actually had to settle for every 15 minutes to sync the data. And when you look at what it actually takes to sync the data, on average, it's about 11 seconds, okay? 11 seconds doesn't sound like much, but when, when you have to wait 15 minutes in the middle of a demo of this customer you're trying to sell onto Mover, it is a long time you have to wait, right? Um, and the bigger problem becomes being traditional SQL and having a schema is when I have to make a change to that database schema in SQL and I have to pause my sync and restart it, it takes one hour. 
So guess what I'm going to have to do to schedule that maintenance during downtime? Um, wait, tell users not to use my system, right? Are we in 1990 or are we in 2018? So not really, really working for what we're trying to do here. Um, so what do we do? Again, we look at our friends at Couchbase um, and said, you got something for us. It's actually the one feature, I'll be honest, that brought us first to Couchbase um, is this cross data center replication. And after I've tried this and I've tried a few other solutions, I really started losing faith. I was like, I'm going to have to write code that does it myself until uh, we went and tested XDCR. And XDCR, it is as good on paper as it is in reality. Um, we have two clusters. They're geo-replicated and geo-distributed. We use SSL. It was, let's say, a little bit more difficult to set up, but trust me, you want that extra layer of security. Um, uh, you know, a few lessons learned here. I put them use DNS, not IP addresses. Um, create a tunnel between your two data centers that is dedicated for this. Um, and then in the end, use a conflict resolution that makes sense for you. And we use a time-based conflict resolution. You do need to set up one extra thing called an NTP server to, 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 to keep your times in sync. Uh, but the, the reality is that once you get these things done, XDCR pays off. And um, again, what better way to illustrate than to do a quick demo? So let's switch back to, uh, to my screen. So I mentioned there is one login, uh, gomover.io brings you to this traffic manager. I'm in Europe, so I'll hit the European servers. But to illustrate this, I've actually created separate DNS entries. So I have go slash west, famous Pet Shop Boy songs, if you guys uh, remember. Uh, but to prove where it is, I'm going to look at actually geolocating this. So go west is somewhere. Actually, I don't know what it is. Let's see. Oh, it says it's in San Jose. So it's in West US, OK? And then go Europe is the other one. And that will be there you go, Netherlands. OK, so we have two servers replicating. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, this is the old one, right? This is SQL Sync, OK? So to illustrate the point, I'm going to log in here. Um, this is what I see as a customer, some high-level details. But to, to cut to the point, I'm going to go and do a simple operation. Let me change my password, OK? So my current password is a very strong password. My admin told me to change it, so I'm going to change it to something uh, even stronger, OK? OK, excellent. So let's hit change here to factor authentication. I will hopefully get an SMS uh, in a second. All eyeing lunch right now. Uh, there it is. Excellent. OK, so let's put the SMS code. Confirm. Password change. Let's make sure it works. So the new password is couchbase. OK, log in. Yes, I'm in. So I'm going to log out here and go really quick now to Europe and try to log in. No. OK, let's try the old one. OK, bingo, old one still works, right? So that's the problem. Let's pretend this is a, I don't know, security incident. This guy's account got hacked, and I got to change his password really quick. Or like I said, in the middle of that demo, I want to invite a user. My guy's doing the demo are in the US, and the user getting invited is in Europe. The fact that he has to wait 15 minutes for that replication to happen is unacceptable, OK? So let's switch over to New World, right? So uh, I have some containers, say, here, uh, again, to prove the point. NW, uh, 
is in San Jose. And I think I have one called WE. Redirect doesn't work, but that's okay. Uh, WE is in, you guessed it, uh, no. No. Uh huh. That's why I love live demos. Typing is always much easier when you have 100 people watching you. 50th try. Uh, North Holland, we moved, we moved. Okay, great. So, two services, again, US and Europe. Remember, this is couch piece behind, okay? So, I'm going to go pick one. Let's pick either West Europe. I'm going to log in and um, here I am, okay? A little bit different looking, but anyway, that's our preview portal. So, I go here now and just to prove the point, that same password should work. There you go, okay? So same password works in both environments. I'm logging in, let's go to West Europe. Okay, old password, log in, go to my profile and let's change it. So I'm gonna go here and say, Okay. Second one always comes on time. Great. Okay. Password change. So I'm going to log out. Let's make sure it works. I'm in, okay? Moment of truth. Let's go in the US. I teleported myself really quickly and I'm in North America right now and I'm gonna try the old password. Let's try that first. Nope. New password, boom. I'm in. That is Couchbase. That is XDCR. Time to set up XDCR. I asked my DevOps guy, five minutes. Seriously, that's how easy it is. Yes, it takes a bit more time to set up the clusters. There's some great partners out there. There's some great resources to learn how to do it. There's some great templates for both AWS. Um, I think Azure and GCP are coming, but the idea is that you can do it. Um, cloud native, and let's go back to the slides. Cloud native is not about just simply going to the cloud. It is definitely not about going to PaaS. Uh, PaaS is great when you get started and you want to learn. Um, and if you, I'm not saying it's not good for any situation. I'm saying when you really want to grow at scale and you have the engineering prowess to do it, uh, invest a bit more and you'll get a much better rewards. Um, performance, you guys saw 5 to 15x of, of Redis for pure caching. Um, no SQL, obviously, you know, we love JSON, we love documents. It is better than SQL in most cases until you get to the actual query language. And again, big credits to the Couchbase team for making Nickel actually palatable to everybody. Even Steve, my trusted DBA, actually made the jump. Steve's been working with SQL for basically his whole life, uh, and now he can't get enough of, of Couchbase because he can speak that same familiar language, select queries, and C queries, uh, fully supported in 5.5. And then obviously XDCR for the win. It is amazing, it works. Um, the actual replication, I'm really slow at typing, um, but it, it, we've measured it. The whole data center to data center time difference is about 120 milliseconds. Couchbase adds probably another three. So we're looking at anywhere between 100 and 200 milliseconds total to replicate. Um, when you deal with a security issue and people need to log in, that makes all the difference in the world. 
Um, I do have a blog. I wrote more about this. Um, there is, uh, there's, there's a lot of resources online. Um, check us out and definitely check out Couchbase. Thank you.